First at four, we've got an air quality alert for the rest of today and then a forewarned weather alert as the risk of severe weather continues to go up. Also first at four, dramatic fire rescue and escape at this town home in Pontiac. How a pregnant mom saved her newborn and herself. We're also tracking a medical crisis for the family of basketball superstar LeBron James. The latest on his son's condition after the teenager went into cardiac arrest. First at four starts now. Live from downtown Detroit, local four news first at four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, buckle up for a big first forecast. The forewarned weather team tracking rising temperatures, air quality concerns, and then storms headed this way tomorrow. They have you covered. Kim Adams leading our coverage right now with the very latest. It has been a busy July. It's anything but boring, that's for sure. Air quality alert, we'll start with that because that's our immediate concern. It is for those of you with sensitivities to air quality. Uh, so if you have asthma, senior citizens, you'll notice it. But we're also seeing a little bit of unhealthy for, for all pop up too. So if, if you're sensitive at all to the air quality, you're going to want to try to stay inside as much as possible because, again, we are getting into uh, kind of an unhealthy situation. But this is where we are officially unhealthy for sensitive. Now that goes until midnight tonight. If you're headed out to the ball game, and again, you have those sensitivities, you're going to feel it. You can see the haze in downtown Detroit. Mid 80s, a little bit humid. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s by 9 o'clock. Now let's talk about tomorrow. Our risk for severe weather continues to go up. Yesterday at the same time, we were in a marginal risk north of I-94. Now bumped from marginal all the way to enhanced, and it includes all of southeast lower Michigan all the way up through Sandusky. So it's all of our viewing area, high winds, heavy rain, and the risk of tornadoes. So we'll time it out for you in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Kim. Police are investigating a disturbing shooting in Inkster that shook up an entire neighborhood this morning. Happened at Patterson and Shadow Lawn. It was about 930. Our cameras were rolling on Patterson as Inkster police swarmed the area, taking one man in for questioning after another man was shot in the face in the same area. Now we are checking on his condition. Two men were seen running from that shooting. It's unclear so far what sparked the gun violence. Two children are in critical condition right now. Two other people injured after a fire at this townhome in Pontiac. It was the scene of a dramatic escape and a rescue. Firefighters say a pregnant mom threw her newborn baby from a second floor window into her husband's arms before she jumped herself. Then firefighters ran into the apartment to rescue two other children in a second floor bedroom. Those two kids are in critical right now. The others suffered minor injuries. Tonight at 5, a live update on what's happening to the building and the cause of the fire is under investigation. A push to rename Detroit's Hart Plaza after a national civil rights icon was officially referred to city council today. It is a controversial recommendation. Councilwoman Mary Waters wants to rename Hart Plaza after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Waters points out Detroit is where Dr. King first delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. However, some critics say Michigan's former U.S. Senator Philip Hart also did significant work for civil rights. Today, activist Sam Riddle told City Council renaming Hart Plaza would be ignoring history. Phil Hart and Martin Luther King Jr. were teammates. King gave the speech, but it was Phil Hart that shepherded it and got passed and made it the law of the land, the 1965 Voting Rights Act. The proposed renaming has been referred to a committee. The University of Michigan's head football coach could be suspended for four games in the upcoming season. Yahoo Sports is reporting Jim Harbaugh is working toward an agreement in a recruiting investigation. The NCAA enforcement staff alleges Harbaugh was dishonest when he was first interviewed. He said he didn't recall events but was never dishonest on purpose. We did reach out to the university, which says it cannot comment on the ongoing investigation. But we are going to check in with Bernie Smilovitz. He's working on this story for us, and he'll be on at Local 4 News at 5. A lot of people are talking about another young athlete going into cardiac arrest. This time, it's Bronny James, the son of NBA superstar LeBron James. It happened during a basketball practice yesterday. Let's head over to Kimberly Gill, who has more on the story. Kim? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. It's always tough to hear about someone's child getting sick, no matter what their age might be. Bronny James is 18 years old, and he's on the basketball team at the University of Southern California. He's an incoming freshman and was one of the 
top high school prospects in the entire country. So far, neither the school nor the James family are sharing many details on what happened. But as you said, James went into cardiac arrest while practicing. Of course, he was rushed to the hospital. Today, we're told he is out of the intensive care unit as, and is in stable condition. This is the second straight year, though, the Trojans have had a player suffer cardiac arrest. Another freshman suffered cardiac arrest last July, but was able to play by January. Today, the James family is asking for privacy during this time. Now, a family spokesperson released a statement that says, quote, LeBron and Savannah wish to publicly send their deepest thanks and appreciation to the USC medical and athletic staff for their incredible work and dedication to the safety of their athletes. Savannah is LeBron's wife and Bronny's mother. Our coverage of the story continues when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. We'll bring our medical expert, Dr. Frank McGeorge, into the discussion on how young athletes can run into these scary medical incidents. But for now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Millions of Americans, plenty of businesses are breathing a sigh of relief after UPS and the Teamsters made a deal. The shipping company has announced a tentative contract agreement with 340,000 union members. Both sides started talking again today after saying they were 95% of the way toward a deal. The Teamsters are now calling the agreement historic. They say it brings higher wages and air conditioning into more delivery trucks. Union members still need to approve the deal. Voting starts August 3rd. It runs through the 22nd. Texas Governor Greg Abbott didn't blink over this river barrier, so the Justice Department has now pulled the trigger, and it's taking Texas to court. The suit was filed late yesterday afternoon. The Justice Department says the buoys were installed without permission, and that violates federal law. It's not seeking an emergency injunction, so the barrier will stay put for now. Governor Abbott says his state has the right to stop undocumented migrants from entering Texas. So far, no court dates have been set. We are waiting to see if Alabama prosecutors will press charges against Carly Russell. She was the focus of a nationwide search earlier this month, but has now admitted the whole thing was a hoax. Her attorney released a statement to police apologizing to everyone who was concerned and also said she acted alone. Police say they'd still like to talk to her to get more information. The cause and effect of climate change isn't just about hot temperatures, wildfires and flooding, but also a marked and measurable increase in the insect population, and that includes ticks. Paula Tutman in Shelby Township for us to show us why we need to be doing things a little bit differently from now on. All right, Paula, fill us in. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so I'm in the middle of a little bit of dog madness right now, but what we're really talking about is the prevalence of ticks. We're so accustomed to checking our dogs for ticks and for things like that. But, but what we're really talking about is a change in the normal way we need to be operating because now we need to check ourselves. We gotta check our people. Here's the irony. Dogs and cats have topical and oral tick preventatives that keep ticks from latching into them. Kelly says that's why she thinks she had an unwanted hitchhiker. A manager at All American Pet Resorts in Shelby Township with pets of her own one day after walking her dog. Oh my gosh, I screamed so loud. My husband came running. It was, yeah, I was scared because you don't normally see them on you. Ticks have a foolproof way of traveling on the wings of birds and the bodies of mammals. And because of our climate and its changing, ticks have more time to set up longer to find mates to breed and warmer temperatures to thrive, says Christy Yee, the founding veterinarian of Hometown Vet Clinic in Rochester Hills. We are seeing a lot more exposure to ticks, meaning people in neighborhoods, apartment complexes. The bottom line is they're everywhere. Ticks need a host to latch onto for their blood meal. And if the cat and dog won't work, the human will. They don't have a long hatch cycle. They're actually dormant. They, are, they basically hibernate in their environment. And when I use 40 degrees as my little temperature check, if it's above 40 degrees, those ticks are active and moving. Dr. Anthony Anjan, the infectious disease expert from McLaren Macomb says, that's not a reason to panic, but it is a reason to be prepared. Lyme disease is a big concern for pets and people. The good news is in the Detroit Metro Tri-County area, it's not that prevalent, but Washtenaw County is seeing a rise. But Dr. Anjan says we have to put that in perspective for the entire state of Michigan. 2020, there were 400 cases, 2021, 800 cases. We don't know the data for 2022 yet. So when you consider how much time people spend outside, how many people 
get contact with ticks or don't become in contact with ticks, it's not all that common of a disease. At the end of the day, gone are the days when you just need to check your pet. Moving forward for the foreseeable future when out and about, particularly in wooded and grassy areas, you now need to check your people. If you can wear light clothing, that's good so you can see the ticks crawling around. An insecticide is another secondary barrier that you can use. And after you're outside walking, then what you should do is go inside and check your body for ticks. Check under your armpits, the hairline, the groin. These are areas where you may not notice the ticks. So again, I really do want to make it clear, this is not a reason to panic. It is a reason to adjust so, oh, okay, I see you. So important to get your dog and your cat that preventative, that topical or oral preventative, because it keeps those ticks from latching in because it's a nerve agent. But keep in mind when those ticks fall off, they're looking for another warm body and that could be you. So again, you just want to make sure that you are checking yourself as much as you are checking your pets. Karen? Hard, I was gonna say it's a hard story to think about, but it's really so important to share and you're right. We've got to do a little bit more now. We appreciate it. Thanks, Paula. Still ahead, first at four. What do you get when you mash up an Xbox promotion with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Here's a hint. You might think it smells delicious. Also, another European country is facing a triple threat, making life difficult for everyone. We're going to show you what they are up against. First, dash cam video shows a state trooper literally jumping to save his own life. The story behind the video right after the break.